fresh. What is up folks? Today is all about the Easy Rig, specifically the Mini Max. Now in the world of Easy Rigs, the Mini Max is at the bottom of the tier. However, it is really still a really nice, remarkable tool. It does have a 15 pound capacity, so keep that in mind if you're looking at Easy Rigs. For me, with my Komodo fully kitted out, it actually maxes out anywhere between 12 and 13 pounds, so I have a few pounds of leeway. Now I have worked with both the Flowline 750, which is like the Chinese knockoff of an Easy Rig, as well as as the ready rig if you guys are familiar you've been on the channel for a minute you know that I own the ready rig for about two years so we're gonna talk about my experiences working with all three and what I prefer so the first thing that I guess we could talk about is the flow line because that is the most similar. Flow line 750, I believe runs around 750 bucks. And whereas a mini max runs at 1300 brand new. So, you know, the flow line is half off, but you get what you pay for folks. Now I was working on a documentary last year. Some of you guys know, if you're familiar with the channel, I was the B cam op and uh, we were shooting on the Canon C500 Mark II with big old Canon Cine servo zoom lenses and big old V-mount batteries. So that rig was very quite large. Now for the majority of that shoot, I used my ready rig, but there was one pickup day, which unfortunately I don't have BTS of, but there was one day where I used their flow line because I didn't bring my ready rig and it was brand new. So I busted it right out of the box. And I will say that the assembly of the flow line is way more painstaking than the assembly of the easy rig. So let me show you how easy it is to disassemble this easy rig. There you go. I just disassembled it and I throw it in the bag and away I go. Now to reassemble it, boom. Very simple. Another thing you'll notice here is that this just turns like this, right? It swivels like this and that's as far as it can go. With my experience with the flow line, and now I understand this may be part user error because I only use that flow line for one day, but I'm 90% sure that I assembled it correctly. Um, once this part was on the flow line, it swiveled almost damn near 360 degrees. Maybe I can't even actually remember. It was quite a while ago, but it may have even spun a full 360. I can't remember, maybe not, but it definitely spun at least 180, like way more than this. So basically on the flow line, it goes all the way like this, right? The easy rig, that only did that because I pulled this up out of the bar. When this is locked, this is all you get, right? Now this is actually much safer. Uh, you know what I mean? And I think it doesn't take long for you to realize if you've shot a lot, you know why this is safer that this is restricted. For instance, one of the biggest thing is, is whenever you pop the camera off, you don't want this thing going and flying around and hitting someone in the head. So for that reason alone, Easy Rig is gonna win in the safety department hands down. Another area where the Easy Rig wins is security. Uh, you know, when I was using the flow line, the way that the tension works on that thing it made me very, very nervous. The cord did not feel as strong or sturdy. Um, that's just in my own personal opinion, right? Another area where the Easy Rig is going to win is comfort. The flow line, the way that these bars are constructed, really dug into my sides. And I am a very slim guy. I am 5'9 and weigh 140 pounds, right? I am, you know, it's just, I've been the same size since 19 years old. With the Easy Rig, it is way more comfortable. I've been working as the cinematographer on a low budget horror feature film, and I use this thing almost daily on that job for at least six hours at a time. Um, and this thing, I've never had complaints about the comfort of it, where that flow line really dug into my sides. You know, the Easy Rig is just hands down a winner for me. And a lot of it, I think, just goes to you get what you pay for, right? And my experience as a freelance cinematographer is that whenever I buy the least expensive item, you know, just based out of necessity, I find that later on I end up getting rid of that item either because it broke or it's crap or because it's just not performing correctly. And then I end up getting the item that I eventually wanted anyway. So in the long run, you end up spending more. So I'll just say that and leave that there. Now, if you guys have been on the channel for a while, you know that I used the ready rig for a very long time, probably all close to two years, if not longer. And I used to use that as a easy rig setup. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, here's some examples where I would just like take one arm off of the ready rig and just use the other arm in more of an easy rig fashion. Now, there is some huge downsides to that. The biggest one being that when you do the ready rig like that, your camera starts out at chest level. Now I'm only 5'9", so most of the time when I had to get like shoulder level or even above, or even eye level or above eye level, 
I ended up having to hold the camera up way higher and then, you know, now it, you're using your arm. So it kind of negates the purpose of using something like an easy rig or a ready rig, right? So that's one thing I will say, if you are looking to use the ready rig for both gimbal and handheld, much like I was doing, I wouldn't recommend that. A lot of guys that I know, a lot of higher level freelance DPs, they actually own both the ready rig and the easy rig. So they keep the ready rig for all their gimbal work and then they have the easy rig for all of their handheld work. Um, for me, I just don't really lean on gimbals too much and when I do, I just use the little pistol grip gimbals and I just love running around like that. It doesn't bother my arms and I don't mind. I come from the glide cam world, so I just love having the freedom, the extra, you know, freedom of movement. Cause that's another thing I will say, you know, I experimented with the gimbal ring on the ready rig and all of that in the past and I just hated it. It just really constricted my movements. You're kind of just stuck. And I was like, this sucks. I just want to get out of this, get out of the ready rig, take my gimbal out of that ring. And I just want to run around with the gimbal, you know? Um, but that's just me. But the reality of me and I know how I like to shoot, I much, much prefer handheld. I always argue for handheld over gimbal. Even if it's like a walk and talk, I'll be like, mm, how long is the walk and talk? Can we go dolly? I just, I'm just not a fan of gimbals, right? But so you have to know how you shoot if which you want to go for, the ready rig or the easy rig. But I definitely would keep that in mind if you are more of a gimbal guy then I would say you probably look at the ready rig but that's not to say that you can't fly a gimbal on this right you could easily still rig this up and easily fly a gimbal on this it's not hard you know this has a really nice space to hold the pistol grip of the gimbal so you know it could still definitely do both I just know that if you're using big rigs and really large gimbals then probably the ready rig is more ideal. So there's a couple things that I really love about the easy rig. One of them is just so much easier to dial in the tension, just this little knob on the back and I can get my second AC or whoever's close by to just loosen or tighten it based upon the tension that I need or desired. So here I've, I've put this on because I wanna demonstrate something. There's a little knob up here and this is really cool. So I can adjust this dependent on if I want my camera closer or further away, right? And then it's just so simple to lock that in there, right? And now it's sitting in the middle. Or if you wanna go way, way out, you know, you wanna start with your camera really far away. It just depends on the size of your rig or maybe where your monitor is set up, right? And now it starts out way out here. So it's kinda of cool. Another one of my favorite aspects of using the Easy Rig is you can do some really cool movements that just wouldn't be able just straight up handheld. And not even on the Ready Rig, to be honest. Um, you can get really nice faux jib movements out of the easy rig. Now the key to this is dialing in the tension just right. So you could easily go from someone sitting down, right? You're getting them sitting down. And then when they stand up, the easy rig just slides up so nice and smooth, way better than the flow line in my experience of working with both of those, right? Um, so without further ado, the producers and director of the feature film that I'm currently working on, they've given me permission to share some real world footage. So I'm gonna show you some examples of stuff that I captured using the easy rig mini max along with my red Komodo rig. So there you have it folks. If you're interested in seeing more behind the scenes on that feature film or other projects that I work on, or you're just interested in what it's like being a freelance cinematographer in Los Angeles, then I encourage you to check out the Dog Times Patreon. The Dog Times Patreon is the number one way to support the channel. So gigantic thank you to all of my Patreon members. But also it's just a great, awesome little filmmaking community. We have our own private Discord chat. You know, members submit jobs that they're working on and I give work feedback. And it's just a really cool little community. But it also gives everyone a way to see into the world from pre-production, through production, all the way to the final end product beyond post. So if you're interested in any of that, I encourage you to check out this link as well as down in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching and I will see you next week.